Hey guys, uh, so welcome back to Jungle Connect. So today I have Rajat Desh Pandey with me, and uh, we go a long way back. We we were actually in the same hostel in IIT Bombay back in 2004, and uh, uh, you know he was uh, he was the big bully in the hostel, always telling uh, because he already had spent one year in the in IIT Delhi, so he all he knew the ropes a bit too much. So, so you know, I know him from there, and then he went on to, uh, you know, have a career in fintech, and then eventually he started a company in fintech. And uh, you know, so I thought it will be a very interesting story, and it will be good to catch up with him in general. So I brought him on uh, on this uh, podcast, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. So, so Rajat, welcome to Jamil Connect, and uh, yeah, tell us about yourself, man. Little bit about your, like, where do you come from? Cool. Thank you so much, Samar, uh, for having me um, on on this podcast. Uh, so I'm I'm from Gurgaon. Uh, my hometown is Gurgaon, and uh, you know, my uh, I've I've sort of been uh, in my career. I've I've been part of analytics, and then uh, a little bit of uh, investment banking, investment research, and then I moved into the tech scene. Um, I did uh, sort of how how I moved into the tech scene essentially is by writing an Android app for a startup, volunteering on the side, and then I liked it, so I quit my job, and then I joined a startup called HealthCard.com to learn uh, you know what it is that tech guys do. and i learned the ropes of the you know the web and how it worked and everything and what a server was what a back end was what a front end was etc at healthcard and it was interesting and then i did a bunch of work with them on their mobile apps uh, their mobile web property and then moved on to build their uh, logistics platform internal logistic not build but sort of work on it and then uh, then i quit and um uh, we did finbox 1.0 as a b2c app uh, in 2015 and um uh, it was an interesting experience uh, but we did realize ki uh, building a b2c business is all about is it's a different business you've to sort of uh, it's it, it it takes a different route a uh, different um, you know kind of ethos of building and maybe also raising a lot of money to acquire customers and which we realized wasn't what we were good at i guess and then we stopped uh, and then we i went on to work at a startup called go pigeon which was a logistics aggregator and that was a b2b company and i deliberately chose a b2b startup because i wanted to understand how b2b businesses worked and got a sense of that and then uh, you know a bunch of guys from there and uh, my brother also who's who's a co-founder we started finbox in its b2b avatar in 2017 uh, may i think and it's been about 4 years since we've been building this uh, in in the fintech space so yeah it's sort of roller coaster so, so, ride all over the place so rajit let's let's double click on that a little bit like tell tell us uh, like what finbox 1.0 was exactly and you know what did it do and you know maybe what did you learn from that experience so finbox 1.0 was essentially a personal finance management app which looked at data in your inbox and then you know showed you um your spend patterns etc uh, data from sms's and showed you your spend patterns and sort of where you were spending categorizing your spends etc and visualizing them for for you and it was interesting it 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 did a lot of organic downloads uh, but by a lot i would say tens of thousand but that didn't sort of um, make a business i would say for us and and what we learned essentially was that uh, you know what we tried very very early in our sort of journey while building it was that we thought okay tens of thousands is enough now we need to prove a business model and we went out and tried to sort of make money on that but you know to our you know we we learned that you shouldn't make money on b2c companies too early on i guess you have to get yeah. to millions and millions of users and 
you know basically look at your customer acquisition much more carefully and maybe figure out business models later and i think uh, another thing was that personal finance management is hard uh, right uh, at every point in the you know startup ecosystem maturity there is always a personal finance management startup so you know right now even if you can look at it as uh, neo banks are you know doing a lot of personal finance management things and yeah. um you know so there's this essay which i never published which is everything is personal finance management so if you look at even the us sort of um you know fintech space b2c there is a lot of personal finance management sort of companies coming in with different kinds of flavors for different kinds of audiences i think what we also learned was that personal finance management is not a not one product it is a different product for different kinds of people in different stages of their life so financial management for a retired person is nothing similar to what like a young guy 22 23 year old needs yeah right so i i think i have i've downloaded such app sometimes in there was this app called walnut maybe right which was yeah. probably in this yeah i think i downloaded no no it, it it's an indian app no no it's an indian app oh, okay. it got acquired okay. by capital float yes okay so i i think i downloaded and uh, and you are right i mean it's it's a big pain to keep seeing like you know how much did i spend and where did i yeah. spend especially for people who are not very careful so i think it's a little bit of a yeah, yeah and yeah. i think it's 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 those uh, that's also like a similar time that we started i think they had also started and i think they yeah. went on to scale very well uh, and they were in the bangalore ecosystem and we were in gurgaon and you know that sort of tells us what um, you need to do i think they did all the right things yeah. they raised a bunch of money acquired a lot of customers and then you know they sort of exited they did well for themselves and i think the guys are now doing another startup or i'm guessing uh, you know of course big or short in the fintech ecosystem now so <laughs> so Kudos what's the that, what yeah. was your biggest learning from that uh, experience because i think that's like you know couple of things i think yeah i think a couple of things one is you know do what sort of um you know everybody has a nature and a knack right and do what you sort of are fit for so we realized that we were fit for b2b businesses not b2c businesses right and another piece is yeah we learned a lot on the b2c side as well we we did understand a lot on the ux perspective etc building products but we didn't understand was that how to build a company around a b2c product right and how yeah. what it takes to do that and and we very clearly understood that we are never going to understand that so we didn't pick that yeah. again i think that's a very important realization to have a lot of people are too stubborn to accept it so i think that's that's good uh Mm-hmm. So yeah, so tell me like, so what what's your role in the company at this moment? I mean, do you wear every hat? Do you wear one hat, or like, is it like everybody does everything? How how are you guys taking it? So um, we are a very lean team. Um, uh, I think now about hitting forty, um, and uh, we, uh, what we do essentially is, um, you know. Uh, people wear multiple hats and anybody can do any role that's what we 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 at least tell people and uh, we are fairly technical all of us uh, so we started out writing code and on the data science side also everybody sort of does the models and you know deployments etc so each and every person in the company is uh, is fairly technical and everybody can build product front, front end back end etc um and and i've done that and at some point i've done uh, a bunch of you know engineering i've done a bunch of product and then uh, you know i've done a bunch of uh, marketing now we have a team for that uh, and then doing really some good stuff but um, now my job is essentially um, to figure out uh, what to do next of course uh, a bunch of business development as well and uh, you know stepping in um, to have a chat with people when we think things are not going in the right direction or uh, mostly just uh, you know getting out of the way though that's that's what yeah, i would say but yeah uh, i've been doing a bunch of product stuff but yeah uh, now i don't do any of that okay and so so what is finbox 2.0 i mean you know for a layman 
what would you say so, how do you define it see finbox 2.0 very clearly is uh, you know when we started this we realized that we we are a tooling company and we are building tools right and we are building tools for people to build on top of so that's the ethos so we build stuff that uh, other people can use to build more stuff right so that's that's mm-hmm. like at the core of what we do and we build uh, apis and sdks for um, for the lending ecosystem and the latest stuff that we built is the embedded finance platform which is essentially anybody wants to become uh, you know sort of embed financial services in a non fintech app um, they can take it and sort of do it in th- you know 3 days right? if you are a developer um, you know or or 3 weeks maximum you can go live right and this is something that you need to you know if you had to build yourself it would take 2 to 3 years um, of you know building and then lending out money and stabilizing all of your uh, underwriting models risk management etc so we've just wrapped it up abstracted it out into a bunch of apis and sdks that you can just put in and get going so that's what we built you and what's the most common uh, what's the most common service that people use is it like giving loans to your users or what's the like the most common use case right. that people use so the the most common use case essentially is there are two use cases so if for example if you have a large platform and you're looking for a monetization model so you could just put in you know a lending feature um, and you could just give mm-hmm. out loans to your customers basis uh, you know the context that is getting generated so if you are an invoicing app and you know if, if somebody has created an invoice you can just you know tell them okay you are not getting this money quickly do you want a loan and you know just people can just get a loan and then carry on with their business if you are so basically my example was, is any any app that has visibility on finance or visibility on cash flow you can be embedded into them right uh yeah so if you want a lending as a feature in your app uh, you know and you can provide some context to lending uh, through your sort of a product uh, then rsdk can just bring in lending for you theoretically right. it could go in anything it could go in a swiggy it could go inside a zomato but we don't sort of we believe that context is definitely necessary and how, how do you guys ensure that you know there is like this this lending is the risk yours or is the risk caps no no so uh, the risk um, the app doesn't carry the risk and uh, okay. we underwrite the customer and then uh, we have lender partners who ultimately carry the risk and how how do you ensure that you know these are like these people are worthy of the credit and how, how do you basically you know uh, so, make sure that there are no npas so um, in finbox 2.0 embedded finance is a recent product but we have a fairly large credit risk uh, underwriting business which is the, which are apis that a lot of large lenders in the country used to underwrite their own borrowers so we are actually credit risk specialists uh, who sort of do a lot of credit risk and machine learning work uh, and expose that as apis for other people to consume so a lot of fintechs a large number of nbfcs etc are using us uh, we've underwritten up 16 million borrowers in three and a half years uh, in india so we have a huge data set and um, a lot wow. of experience in in underwriting borrowers so that is what we use uh, and those are sort of now becoming gold standard products in the market so yeah so that that really b- brings confidence to the entire process and and tell us about you know when you started did you did you bootstrap did you raise funding and uh, you know so yeah you- so Yeah. so the uh, the idea of doing a b2b business was that if you sell the right thing or sort of uh, you know build a product that people really desire uh, you know when i say people that is companies they will pay for it and that's the main uh, sort of way we minimize signal to noise ratio and what we build and how we build right and you know we always you know understand that we are building the right thing only when people are willing to pay for it and we were able to get people to pay by sort of iterating on it and then once people started paying we doubled down on it right so that's the way we built it um, and we did raise some funding uh, uh, but not too much and uh, and but we largely funded our business through our revenues 
I think that's the best uh, investors, right? Your customers should be your investors. So I think right. that's the best, best kind of growth. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think one piece is that, you know, the signal to noise ratio thing really matters, right? It, it gives you a sense of what, uh, if you are building something that people really want. Yeah. So if yeah. people are not paying for the product, you don't, you can only hope that they will pay in the future. But, yeah, you know, you, you never know. Yeah. And uh, what in your what is you know the future of fintech in India in your opinion? It's very hot. It has been very hot for quite some time now. It's a lot of money being raised. Some companies had like some recent uh, bad debt kind of uh, scares. <coughs> what do you think about the fintech industry in India in general? So fintech is super, super, uh, it is super early days uh, of fintech in India, right? So in, in, even though, you know, people think that there has been a lot of action in India, but overall, uh, the, the total amount that has been lent out, the so total loan books of, you know, all fintech combined are fairly very, very small. Um, and that the reason is that truly the Indian population hasn't like only now uh, post geo or post pandemic have they actually adopted digital meaningfully, right? And this has accelerated a lot of fintech trends. Uh, payments, of course, have go gone through the roof. UPI, you know, everybody knows what has happened. And similarly, a lot of uh, MSMEs have started to use these uh, new uh, awesome products uh, which are aimed mm -hmm. at them for, you know, invoicing, for, um, you know, uh, this take, uh, taking care of their khata and all of these things, um, you know. So this this trend has really just started. And um, mm -hmm. I think fintech, uh, it, it's going to go crazy. Uh, I think in the next sort of uh, two, two to three years, it's going to, you know, maybe grow 10x. That is my sense of this. But yeah, absolutely. Uh, credit is a cyclical business, right? And if the if something as big as a pandemic hits and it really cuts, you know, if it, it really uh, increases unemployment or people don't have money, then you know, people are going to get the hit. And and of course, uh, startups which are really you know don't have massive balance sheets, they will definitely feel the pain the most, right? And that is what has happened. That it's not uh, any mistake of theirs, right? It's it's something that is uh, cycling. Yeah, it's just yeah. yeah. If the environment is bad. If there's a crash, you know, a lot of companies will shut down without their anything going yeah. wrong. So makes sense. Definitely. Definitely. And and what do you think about the Indian government's uh, you know like uh, attitude towards fintech? You know, sometimes they say they're going to be very very. One, but I've heard from a lot of people that you know things are still a bit tightly controlled. Any any thoughts so, on that? I think it's 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 definitely mixed. Uh, you know, on one hand, the there is a lot of public infrastructure in India that is getting created, right? And uh, on the other hand, uh, I I would say we are in a phase where the government or the regulator is figuring out how fintech how mainstream fintech should look right so up until now mm -hmm. fintech was just on the fringes it was too small and now everybody can see that this is it is going to get you know huge and everybody knows from china from the us a lot of people you know companies are listed uh, china alibaba people so everybody understands the power of fintech and you know how it can really really grow super fast and I, my guess is now everybody understands that this is going to be really, really big and people are trying to figure out how to regulate it or what it means. Um, and, and, and it will take some time. My sense is that uh, once this is figured out, it might take some time, but then, you know, once the certainty sets in, then it will be much better going forward. Yeah. And any thoughts on, uh, you know, crypto and the DeFi movement that's going on globally? You know? What do you think? So yeah, I've, I've been having some conversations. It's definitely very interesting. But of course, I'm not a crypto, crypto ex expert. I've never bought bit Bitcoin or any of those things or never built, written a look, uh, line of solidity, code, etc. But I find it uh, truly fascinating. Uh, I find it, uh, you know, there are certain use cases that are uh, really very, very well, uh, you know, they sort of yield very well to crypto. 
um, some of the funding uh, sort of uh, you know elements uh, in terms of creating um, basically diversified pools of uh, capital uh, for wholesale cases uh, is one thing that i was talking to one of my friends about recently uh, so you know there are a bunch of things that are very super interesting and uh, you know my sense is that it, the ecosystem has also matured and the right people are now uh, involved especially from the institution side so it it mm-hmm. is it can only go up from here yeah but yeah the slight like asterisks i don't know much <laughs> i think about, i think the good thing about crypto is nobody knows much so you know it's okay yeah. to speculate about it Right. So, yeah. so uh, Rajat, what what's next for Finbox? Uh, you know, where do you see yourself five years from now, and uh, what's your vision for Finbox? See, as I said, right, starting out that we are a tooling company. Tooling means that you know we build stuff that sort of becomes standard. It becomes mm-hmm. uh, it becomes uh, a way to do things. It becomes a way to solve super hard problems at, at scale, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, with embedded finance as bk we brought together you know our uh, understanding of how to build software development kits right sdks and apis uh, together with the business model expertise and machine learning expertise of credit uh, and underwriting and all the analytics that we've been doing for uh, quite some time into one cool abstracted layer that anybody can use and i think we've just gotten started um, i i believe that this is the way to go forward it solves a bunch of problems in the lending ecosystem and uh, the ecosystem uh, you know is fairly new so we are trying to give people the power to really reimagine uh, credit uh, in various use cases uh, our sense is that we we will um, you know this should power at least a billion dollars worth of loans in the next next you know 3 or 4 years if all goes well i think we can very very well exceed that so that's that's where we think this is going to go great and uh, and any thoughts on india like you know do you think the five is a is a realistic one and uh, you know so what do you think about that i'm sorry your voice got cut off so much uh, sorry uh, so what i was asking is do you is you know what do you think about uh, the economy of india where things are heading and uh, do you think the 5 trillion dollar economy by 20 <laughs> that's yeah i think it was yeah, yeah yeah that's a very political question no so it's it, yeah. my sense is that india needs to do a lot more um, but yeah. I think one thing that the government has realized is that you know uh, focusing on entrepreneurs or creating more an- entrepreneurs is the only way to do it. Uh, the yeah. the uh, because people have to just help themselves. Even during COVID, we saw that people help people more than you know the system help people. So in India, we are like really uh, on our own in some sense, right? So we have to empower everybody to become self reliant to sort of yeah. break out and build their own you know sort of they have to realize their own dreams we have to everybody yeah i think i think you know what 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 i also think on this is that you know india you have a massive market right and you know just stay away from the government and don't expect much and you'll be fine right it's like uh, yeah. so yeah no makes sense yeah and and yeah india is a diverse country so you know there is um, there are always opportunities and there are always spots which are doing much much better than the average so you know go figure out where what is happening and sort of take advantage of it it's the opportunities are not um, you know they, there are a lot of opportunities and i think mm-hmm. uh, you we have to give one to the government is that they are ambitious definitely you know and I, i believe the execution of course falls to us and uh, we have to be we have to really step up i think uh, you know on the downside i the the sort of feeling that has crept in is that uh, a lot of uh, upskilling is required um, for mm-hmm. people india i think lacks sorely in uh, you know the the quality of talent or you know what people are doing uh, to acquire this talent and it, it's Uh, it's super um, disappointing to me to see that a lot of uh, people really don't take advantage of the online education stuff that is now available right so 
and in our time you know i i remember i used to i used to download these uh, open course where things uh, from mit and all that uh, there were no i think that's the that's the sad part right i mean the yeah. content knowledge has always been there you know it's just the motivation yeah. of people to learn yeah. that is the thing Yeah, yeah everything is now available everybody you know you could take a course from stanford or you could and and or you know there. people people will pay for these courses never do them you know when everything is essentially available for free to be honest so yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely and on the other side you know of course uh, there is a small sort of minority in india which does great uh, so you know people are building space uh, you know companies and they will learn themselves and you know they're doing some such cool stuff In, india is a huge country and my sense is that there needs to be so much more and i think one piece there is uh, people need to really feel empowered uh, they need to understand that you know they can do anything and i think that's that's not a something that they need to realize and internalize and you know we are the only people who are responsible for where we are yeah makes sense and so uh, so my last question it's an interesting uh, thing when i you know from your story i picked up you work with your brother so how is it you know is it easy tough i don't have a brother i have a lot of sisters but i am sure i can't work with them no yeah absolutely it it um, you know there are uh, definitely uh, you know interesting moments i would say there are you know there are disagreements but there are also times when we back each other and um, there are you know it we understand each other implicitly so that's really cool uh, another piece with yeah. me and uh, my brother is that we are totally uncorrelated so uh, we think very very differently uh, about yeah, things so and i think that, that has kept yeah kept us in balance and uh, you know it, it sort of uh, really brings in different kinds of perspective and uh, both of us are super stubborn so you know everybody has to so i so i see point. zero da and you have something in common so let's <laughs> see if you are the next zero da then yeah hopefully yeah, those guys have done really really well so yeah yeah, yeah hopefully in that something to explain you are on the you are on the track man you are on the track so <laughs> awesome so anything you want to add uh, you know super interesting i learned a lot and i love to connect with you and after so many years so anything Absolutely. you want to add no i think you know to your audience um, uh, of course you're doing a great job uh, bringing in people who who sort of been through the journey of becoming an entrepreneur i would say um, you know i would love to just say that uh, give it a shot uh, there's nothing to lose and you know there's no downside of trying yeah so so guys i think uh, to add to that if you see you know it's not like you start something it it gets uh, you know shut down for any reason you can always take a take a break go back to your job and you know regroup and come back and you know do the 2.0 version in fact uh, <clears throat> i think that's when you do the 2.0 version you have so much learning you know you yeah. actually end up building something large so in fact that's i amazing. always have thought that you know sometimes the real problem or the real risk is doing or building something mediocre rather than you know like uh, failing because failure is fine you can start again but you know sometimes you yeah. build something that is sort of working and you don't know if you can leave it or kind of you know do something else so i think yeah i think yeah, even that is not as bad i would say um, you know at least uh, hopefully you will you'll keep talking to people i would one thing yeah. more, one more i would want to say is that entrepreneurship is super lonely and you have to connect with people and sort of get perspective uh, and to be to honest that you are you are you are so uh, you hit the bulls i actually this is the reason i started this uh, jungle connect so when uh, covid hit i was like you know i said okay i'm just talking to you know only people who work with me and i'm not meeting anybody new at all so i thought let's right. start doing this jungle connect and probably we'll have like you know some new learning some new faces and some new discussions absolutely and uh, great that you know we got to chat after a long while and we should catch up in person as well cool man so let me stop the the broadcast so guys uh, thanks for tuning in yeah 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 yeah
Ja. 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 Ja.